If you decide to solder electrical connections, it's important that you use rosin core solder. Acid core solder will corrode the connections and they will fail. Electrical soldering is done with rosin core solder and typically you will find it in the 60-40 variety which is 60% tin, 40% lead. And as it melts it goes from a solid state to a semi-solid or pat, you know, pasty state to liquid. And you have to be careful that you get it to the liquid state or you will wind up with a cold solder joint and it will not be reliable. 6337 solder, which is 63% tin, 37% lead, is also called eutectic solder. As it melts, it goes from solid to liquid and is a more reliable form of soldering. Electrical wire size is measured by its gauge. In America, we use the American Wire Gauge System, or AWG as you'll see it printed on conductors or wires. For National Electrical Code purposes, 18 gauge is the smallest size we typically use in construction or in industry. And usually that would be for control purposes, not or in a light fixture type of application. 14 gauge is the smallest size for building wiring, generally for lights and you know outlets in a residential application. Other sizes in increasing ampacity amp or amperage capacity would be 12 gauge, 10, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, and after that we pronounce it 1 aught, 2 aught, 3 aught, 4 aught, and then we go to the circular mill measurements. It used to be MCM, M standing for the Roman numeral 1000, but it used to be called MCM, or 1000 circular mills. In order to be more uniform with the metric designation, K being the designator for 1000, they've gone to KC mills or KCM. And then we go to 250, 300, 350, 400, 750 is the largest that we typically use, although it does go up to 2,000 circular mills. 18 gauge is fairly small. It's like, it would be like a lamp cord or something of the small nature. We also do get into much larger wire gauges as well. And that'll be shown to you in a moment. This would be 18 gauge wire. It's fairly small. Typically this size would be used in an application like a, a light fixture or some other very small limited use item. We go all the way up. The largest that I've worked with would be 1,000 circular mills. You can see it's a rather large <laughs> diameter. Typically people don't like to work with it because it's not bendable <laughs> or not readily bendable without the use of mechanical or hydraulic tools. The gauge of the wire and the number of strands determine how flexible it is and how easy or difficult it is to work with. This is a number 12 gauge stranded conductor and this is commonly used in conduit. The wire itself conducts the same amount of electricity as a solid conductor, it's just easier to work with and more flexible and bendable. It can be harder to work with in terms of connecting to devices. With devices, sometimes the best practice is to buy a device that accommodates stranded conductors, such as this specification grade receptacle, where the conductor goes in the back and as the screw tightens, it pulls a plate against the conductor 
and works well to hold it in place. It makes a great connection. There are other ways of connecting stranded conductors to devices. One way is to strip the conductor and instead of tightening it in the direction that it's going, you reverse the twist. And then the wire is less likely to come out from underneath the screw terminal. If you tighten it in the direction of the original twist, the conductor tends to mush down and pull away from the screw. Another way is to heat the conductor and coat it with solder that maintains the relative position of all the conductors. It does make it a little bit stiffer and harder to bend the wire around terminals. Another thing that makes conductors a little more difficult to work with or easier to work with depending on your perspective is the number of strands in a conductor. These are both 500 MCM or KCM or KC mill conductors. Same wire gauge but a different number of strands. The one with the more strands is more flexible and bendable. Here's another example. This is a one-aught conductor used in conduit. And you can see I'm pressing, it's not very flexible. This is a one-aught flex cord that is used for battery connections and other things and has a lot of stranding in it. It makes it very flexible, but it is not designed for building wiring. 